I am actually live in England, staying in Rugeley, England, with my British Montreal UK friends. And I am here with James Jacob Prash, who's at live, live in England as well. Jacob, I recently read, went on a tour in Israel, as you know. We were allowed uh, through the Temple Institute, as well as on the Temple Mount. Now, just a couple of questions some of the believers had on the tour. Um, I did take a photograph, which we're going to show um, all our audience here. On the uh, picture, it looks like an alien or a devil or something on uh, on the left side of the uh, of the the uh, mosque that is in place right now. And a lot of the believers asked, is the temple going to actually be built on that location or will it be next to the Temple Mount? Okay. I know, again, in the book that I authored, Shadows of the Beast, we address this subject rather extensively. Let's understand about the abomination of desolations, first of all, the Shikut Sameshomem, that was prefigured by Antiochus Epiphanes setting up his image in the temple of the Greek god Zeus, a corruption of Theos, the Greek word for God, giving Zeus his own features. And of course, um, the Romans identifying Zeus with the planet Jupiter. When the Romans destroyed the second temple in fulfillment of the prophecies of Daniel 9 that the Messiah would come and die before the second temple would be destroyed, a big problem for Orthodox rabbis is that the temple was destroyed in 70 AD and the Messiah had to come by any plain re reading of the text. Be that as it may, what had happened, according to Josephus, the Romans set up pagan incense on the Temple Mount where the house of God had been and where the Holy of Holies had been and began worshipping their gods. Before that, the Fortress Antonio had pagan ensigns and Roman phoenixes, symbols of pagan deities, towering over the Temple itself, over the Second Temple, which became known as Herod's Temple. Again, these things are, are abominations of desolation. As we explained, the Emperor Hadrian leveled the Temple Mount down to the bedrock, basically, and built a city called Erolina Capitolina with, again, a Temple of Jupiter, another abomination. Constantine's nephew, Julian the Apostate, attempted to repaganize the Roman Empire and to reverse what Jesus said about not one stone being thrown down upon another he actually attempted to rebuild the Jewish temple on the Temple Mount. And all these mysterious fires happened, recorded in history and so forth. It didn't work. Well, it goes on. Now there is an abomination of desolation called the Dome of the Rock. It is called the Mosque of Omar, although it is technically not a mosque. It is opposite the Mosque of Aqsa. There is a view that it is on the location of the temple, or where the temple, the first and second temple stood. This is the proposition of Professor of Dr. Dan Bahat, very eminent archaeologist who I briefly met once in Jerusalem. That is his proposition. His proposition is that the beautiful gate was the Nicanor Gate, and it would place the temple right where the Dome of the Rock stood. The alternative, the rival theory, is the one of the late Professor Dr. Asher Kaufman that would have placed the temple 70 meters north, placing the Holy of Holies or situating the Holy of Holies where the Dome of the Spirits presently is. It would align it in a direct line with the present Shah Arakamin, the East Gate or the Golden Gate, under which there are Herodian foundation stones discovered by the Christian archaeologist, Dr. James Fleming. And that would have a linear 180-degree alignment with the cleft of the Mount of Olives or the sacrifice of the red heifer, ritually. Both arguments have their support. If Dr. Kaufman's position can be believed, it would 
mean the temple could theoretically be rebuilt without destroying the mosque of Omar. And it would fit Revelation 11's description of the outer court being given to the Gentiles until the time of the Gentiles was completed. It would basically nearly overlap architecturally with the southern exposure of the Roman fortress Antonia. If, however, Dr. Dan Bahad is correct, that's very different. That would mean that the Dome of the Rock would have to be destroyed in order for the temple to be rebuilt. There is a third very implausible, almost crackpot theory that the temple was even further south at the northern end of the city of David, the original Jebusite city in the area called the Milu. And this is based on very bad geology and very bad geography. It is complete nonsense. It is no way true. It's no way true. Uh, unfortunately, someone who I know and like personally, Bob Quinook, is one of the proponents of it, but it has no basis. There were alternative sources of water other than the Brook of Kidron and the Spring of Gihon. Uh, to the north. There were far bigger pools than the Pool of Siloam, uh, such as the Pool of Bethesda and Hezekiah's Pool. If someone went to the rabbi's tunnel today, which you may have done on your visit, you would have come out in parallel to the Wailing Wall, walking north, and the exit would be to a large Hasmonean cistern. There were huge sources of water well to the north of the city of David. So the idea that they needed the water for the temple drainage system. It could only come if the temple was further to the south. Uh, reflects a fundamental ignorance of both the geology and of the geography of, of ancient Jerusalem and of the Temple Mount area and the city of David and of the upper city and of the area to the north of it around what is today Via Dolorosa. Uh, it is just historically and archaeologically insupportable. Nonetheless, those are the main theories uh, as to the location of the temple. It would seem, in brokering a false peace, there will be some kind of a division of the Temple Mount based on Revelation chapter 11. What we keep telling people is watch this space. Now you ask about these images. These images naturally occur in the marble. They're not engraved. They're not embossed. They're not put there by any artesian or artist. They are natural. They are there from the beginning, from the construction of the Mosque of Omar. Uh, these faces, and there are two of them, there are two of them, and each has an upper and a lower, a counterpart facing down and an upper one facing up, and there are two of them, not just one. Do these correspond to the Antichrist and false prophet? I personally believe so. I'm not being superstitious or dogmatic, but I do not believe it is a coincidence that those faces, which are plainly, plainly demonic, if not satanic, plainly and conspicuously, I, I don't know how good the definition is you can get with the camera, but when you see them with the naked eye, it's rather frightening. And directly above it, a citation from the Surah and the Koran, God has no son. Allah is not begotten, neither does he beget. God has no son. Now we're told in the epistle of 1 John that that which denies the father-son relationship is antichrist. Islam is an antichrist religion. It denies the sonship of Jesus and his deity. Thus, you see it mounted and imposed directly above these two images on the slabs directly above these two images on the slabs. I do not say that the Mosque of Omar is the abomination of desolation, but it is an abomination of desolation. And consistent with that, I'm personally persuaded that it is not a coincidence that those two images are there. I do not say that it is the image of the beast, but I do say it is an image of the beast. It is a harbinger of what is to come. It is a shadow of what will happen 
with the Antichrist and false prophet. It, the, the coincidence, it, it, it's too conspicuous to be a mere coincidence. Now, of course, Islam ignores this. Islam utterly ignores it. It doesn't like people looking at it or pointing it out. Nonetheless, it is there. You cannot mistake these two facial images as being something other than what they look like when you actually see them with your own eyes directly under a quotation from the Koran that said, God has no son. And they're on the southern facade that is looking down over the original city of David. It is absolutely, absolutely diabolical. Again, I'm not trying to generate superstition. I'm not trying to be mystical or hyper charismatic. But it's too apparent, too conspicuous, too pronounced, in my view, to be mere coincidence. I believe God has allowed those things to be there to disclose the true nature of Islam and to disclose the spiritual battle over the Temple Mount that will climax with the Antichrist and false prophet coming into conflict with Jesus in the last days. Thank you so much for your question. My name is Jacob Prash. Thank you, Jacob.